Please stand. Welcome you to our uh, midweek Lenten service. If you didn't know, there's a, a bulletin in the center here that you can pick up and follow along the service with, uh, right there on the little TV tray that's over there. And all the music except for one hymn will be in that. And we begin with this greeting. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, source of all goodness and life, who clothes us with Christ and makes us one by that Spirit. Receive this worship as a blessing. Help us in the midst of it to find a straight path that walks humbly with you. Amen. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those awake this night. Watch, O oh Lord, with all those who Give your angels and saints 
discharge ever on who sleep. Hold your grieving ones. Raise your fallen ones. Mend your broken ones. Searching ones, grant us all your peace. be seated. As we uh, said in worship, we're, we're going to uh, be working on the Psalms during this uh, Lenten journey on Wednesday nights. Uh, and we have some visual aids for the Psalms, uh, the, the, the uh, pictures that we've been putting out. So we've had Psalm 25 out, and if you go out in our Welcome Center, you'll see all the different colored um, creations that people have made of those. Uh, and, uh, and now we've got next week's psalm out there. Uh, so if you colored one the first week, color one again. Uh, Betsy's, uh, our children's minister, is getting the kids to color them too. So we'll, we'll have a wall full of these eventually. Uh, I, I did want you to hear, you're going to hear Sarah uh, read uh, Marty Hagen's version of, of the psalm. I want you to hear the, um, uh, the first ten verses of it too. So if you could listen. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O oh, my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exalt over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love. For they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me. For your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right, and he teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees.
So I've been reading this, uh, this uh, first psalm for a while since Pastor Liz put a coloring sheet in front of me and asked me to color something, which unfortunately I never did. But, <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but the, line, the line that I like the best of is, uh, let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. And, and what that line is saying is, if, if you didn't quite catch it, is David, who, who likely wrote the psalm, right? He's saying, if someone has to go down, God, <laughs> let it be that jerk over there, because I'm a lot better guy than him. Let none who look to you be put to shame, rather let those be put to shame who are treacherous. So there's a time in my life where I would have surely prayed this uh, every day. I would have put it up on my mirror and, and had it give me confidence as I went out in the world. If you've ever been bullied in your life, you, you probably would have too. So I was, I was that good kid. Walked a straight path. I got great... I thought Bob disagreed over there. I got great grades. <laughs> I never once got into trouble with the principal in high school. I worked 20 hours a week after school, and I was active at church. I was in the youth group. I led the youth group. I was that council rep that they kept putting on uh, councils that they wouldn't let you talk, actually, as a high school kid. I, I got to preach at the Good Friday service. I was acolyting at 18 because I liked to do it. I, there is no doubt in my mind that God was up in heaven and he gathered the heavenly hosts around and God said, that guy, he's a good one. <laughs> Jeff Mitchell, on the other hand, he had no redeeming qualities that I could think of even today. He started teasing me when I was in the eighth grade and our, when we played football together and then he never relented until that day I graduated from high school. And the very last words I can remember him saying to me were, see you, faggot. He embarrassed me in front of countless classmates. He made life in high school so toxic that at times I felt like a pariah that no one wanted to be near because they were afraid that Jeff Mitchell would turn his angst against them if they got near me. Oh Lord, let none who look to you be put to shame. That would be me. Rather, let those be put to shame who are treacherous. That would be Jeff. The psalm is attributed to David, right? So David could have been referring to all sorts of people in that. He could have been referring to King Saul, who was wantonly treacherous. Saul had decided that David was getting too popular and uh, was chasing him down in order to execute him out in the wilderness. Not really great behavior for a king of Israel. David could have been referring to the Philistines who were wantonly treacherous. They were occupants of the land that David believed was destined to be Israel's land. And they were, after all, not believers in God anyways. David could have been in his old age when he wrote this, right? And, and, and was talking about his own son Absalom. Absalom was wantonly treacherous. He, he decided that it was time to take over the family business and tried to have his father, the king, deposed. So all sorts of people David could have been thinking about. And really, all of us, at all times, really feel that it's pretty clear whose side God should be on. <laughs> Come on, God. You aren't going to let that guy win, are you? We don't, we forget, or we just simply don't believe that God loves the sinner Carl as much as God loves the sinner Jeff Mitchell, right? That God is an invested at, in the life of David as he is invested in the life of Absalom. That God, our God cares about King Saul even when he's being a wretched king. 
God is not in the win business of picking winners and losers. In fact, Jesus told us that God has a heart for losers, teaching that whoever wants to win the kingdom of God has to start by going on a losing streak. So what do you do, right? I've been fussing with those first two verses because I loved them. <laughs> I decide to skip down to verse 8 in the midst of David's psalm. Listen what he, where he goes. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his decrees. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. What I hear is that even as David's writing this, he's remembering who God is, still teaching David along the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. Humility, knowing that maybe we don't know Everything there is to know about God is the peace of being faithful. And all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. And whatever hope we have for God to act in this world looks like steadfast love. Exactly when I think I know how to be God, which is nearly every day, is when I need the most to have someone give me a dope slap across the head and remind me that I'm not God. Teach me your ways, God. Make my path straight. Help me to see in Jeff Mitchell what you see in me. Help me to love Jeff like you love Jeff. Instruct this sinner in the way. Because all the paths of the Lord are steadfast love, right? But I only find myself on a path of steadfast love every now and then. When it suits me. Humble me, God, and instruct me the way to see my enemies with your eyes. Amen.
Why don't we stand for our prayers? Our uh, prayers, if you, if you tune to the bulletin there, you're, you're going to see that it's, 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 a, it's a new one for us. It's, it's pretty, it's a little more upbeat uh, than we do normally for Lent. Um, so uh, Ernie, Ernie will play it once through, and then Bob will sing it, and then we'll probably sing it three times, um, just so we can get our head around it. Uh, then I'm going to lift up a petition, and just to keep you on your, your Lutheran uh, out of your comfort zone. I'm going to give space then for other people in the congregation to lift up petitions. And uh, when, when I feel like we've said what we need to say, um, I'll end it and then we'll sing, we'll sing this, this uh, prayer petition in here again two times at the end. creation as you do, with beauty and hope. Help us, Lord, find that steadfast love. Pray for Lane Sampson's family and their grief after their funeral today. We pray for Kathleen Sackett's family and their grief after their funeral today. Pray for Meg Reidler and Harold Short healing after their procedures on Monday. Pray for all those in our congregation, the many that are battling cancer. Give time now for other names to be said aloud. Here are these prayers.
And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. Let's leave with him 336, Lamb of God.